the summer of 2012, I arranged to meet with the Kit Fox researchers. Here's my problem. More than four hours of driving. Don't we wish time would elapse like this on a boring drive? During my January visit, only one kit box was captured, and seeing how it's an endangered species, I thought, hmm, might not catch anything this time. I arrived at my one of two choices of lodging in Lost Hills, California. In the wild, kit foxes are mostly nocturnal. We would begin the next morning at 6 a.m. Right away, there was a capture, a recapture, a fox already wearing a collar. Now think of this situation from the point of view of the fox. It's going to be spooky. This isn't speeded up, this is how fast she really works. Brian told me when processing the fox, the goal is to stick to an established routine. That way, data is efficiently collected, and more importantly, both the handler and the fox avoid injury. The kit fox hair may be used in a genetic analysis. If you have a dog, you likely recognize what Kristen is doing here. Pull your dog's hair in one direction, the dog yelps. Pull it in the other direction, and the dog hardly feels it. After the ear tag is clamped, Christine uses a flashlight placed at the ear flap to illuminate any large vessels. That way, she can avoid the vessels when she takes a tissue plug from the ear that's about one quarter the size of a pencil eraser. Tissue from the ear provides the primary genetic sample. is allowed to move around inside the bag, the collar will settle into a natural position. Then it can be rechecked and adjusted if necessary. This site supports the satellite population of the San Joaquin kit fox, a never before studied population. The collars will provide information on demographics, dispersal, den locations, and more. demonstrates what you want not to happen. The 
collar is too loose and the fox, in trying to get it off, gets its paw stuck up inside the collar. The teeth examination is tricky because, uh, well, for obvious reasons. The mouth is examined to look for any injury that may have resulted from chewing on the trap overnight. Samples taken, the collar checked and rechecked. Time to release the fox. When there has been no injury to either the fox or the handler, there's always a good feeling when the fox is set free. Traps checked, another fox to process. Wait a second, what did I just see there? Let's take a look from another angle. Okay, my fault. I had moved back, but I left my camera there on the tripod. That's what the fox reacts to. In summer, 10 o'clock is pretty late for processing foxes, but there were still more in the traps. Points along the road, one trap is placed on the left side, a second trap is placed on the right side. Now, there was a kit fox in each of the two traps. With temperatures rising, Brian made the decision to bring the two kit foxes to where they could be processed in the only shade available, in the shadow of the vehicle. By the end of the morning, seven captures and seven collars. <laughs> <laughs>